decorations Start lining cats with sensation I'm so sure Motivation and inspiration For your eternal destination For the Larry Larry W. Robinson Show. Show. Celebrated media personality Larry W. Robinson presents Gospel Updates. Gospel Updates is the who, what, when, why, and where in the gospel music industry. Gospel Updates is a monthly magazine, weekly newsletter, video webcast, as well as a podcast. Gospel Updates has over 25 years of featuring people in the gospel music community. Gospel Updates magazine and the new Gospel Updates weekly newsletter document those who are continuing to help shape and write new chapters of this ever-evolving story of gospel. Go to www.gospelupdates.com. That's www.gospelupdates.com to get the latest issues. If you want to be featured, call or text 337-214-4046 or email gospelupdates at gmail.com for rates and details. Gospel Updates, featuring people in the gospel community for over 25 years. You're listening to The Larry W. Robinson Show. You are invited to the Black Business Honors, an award celebration designed to honor local owners and employees of black businesses, as well as encourage an entrepreneurial spirit and networking in the black community. Here's what others had to say. I'm attending the Black Business Honors to show support for many of my friends who have stepped out on courage, staying true to their purpose for network opportunities and just to be part of positive happenings in our community. I am attending the Black Business Honors is honest because I look forward to connecting with and encouraging all other black business owners. I simply want them to know that it's never too late in life to follow your dream. It's going to be an amazing experience. For tickets, date, time, and the location, go to blackbusinesshonors.com. That's blackbusinesshonors.com. On the broadcast today, Levi Harrell. I met this gentleman, I didn't meet him personally, but I saw this gentleman at a Cindy Trim event back in 2018. <laughs> he was up there leading worship and uh, high energy. I, I, I was telling the uh, people that I was sitting by, I said, wow, he's I got the energy of Ty Trippett up there. But high <laughs> energy uh, was amazing. And so, um, and then I connected recently with him because of In Your Year Strong Again. He was hosting the, the live broadcast for Cindy Trim along with a young lady, and they invited me to participate in that. And from there, here we are. We're starting a new series titled Kingdom Collective, where we bring like-minded citizens of the kingdom to share principles and strategies of the kingdom to inform, inspire, and ignite believers just like you. So welcome to the broadcast. And Levi Harrell, welcome, sir. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Congrats to you. Uh, we were thank talking you. earlier, y'all. He's been doing this for 26 years. Yeah. And the Lord is pleased with his service. Oh. And to the Lord. <laughs> but no, man, that's correct. That's funny. You said 2018 because I've been hosting her conference since 2015. That's wow. crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, 2018 was my first time in person yeah attending. yeah yeah and uh, i think todd delaney was there and and yeah uh, yep. mccoy did some things but yeah that was yep. my first one in person and then of course i've been going um, to the virtual ones yes since. nice 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 rumor has it i don't know if i'm able to say it yet but rumor has it it'll be in person this year oh cool because okay. i love virtual but ain't nothing yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm a, <laughs> if it is, I'll try to. I'm gonna try to come in person this year. Okay. Absolutely. Let me do you right. Let me do you right. Yes, Levi sir. Harrell. He is a two-time number yes, one sir. best-selling author over at Amazon. He uh, is the editor in chief, and I think it's Plastic. Am I saying it right? Plastic. Plastic. Plastic, there you go. There you Plastic go. magazine. He's a pastor and a speaker. He is the author of Rule by Decree. 
Yes, sir. Protocols for strategic declarations, as well as young sir. 12 principles of becoming a man of character, commitment, and courage. Yes. He also has master classes available on authorship, branding, entrepreneurship, and much, much more. You can catch him if you know anything about Linktree, which a lot of people are using these days. Linktree. His handle is LH Enterprises. LH Enterprises. Uh, Levi Howell, welcome to the broadcast. Thank you for having me, Larry. I'm humbled in all of that. <laughs> well, we came to talk about the kingdom. We came yes, to talk sir. about the kingdom. And um, since we've connected again, I've been on, and I want to say uh, strategy calls on Sundays. Yes. What do you call it? Strategy calls. Okay. So, so yeah. Okay. So, so, so the ministry is called strategy and I spell it different. It's S T R A T dot I dot J E E. And then I call it strategic Sundays, which strategic Sundays. literally started as a random moment. I want to say it was in January. The Lord said, start doing lives at eight. Or no, no, no. He didn't say it that way. He said, do a live at 8 a.m. And I think I might have posted it Saturday at like 7 p.m. Mm -hmm. saying, hey, you all meet me Sunday at 8 a.m. And literally over 50 plus people joined and then hundreds or whatever joined the replay thereafter. And what I thought was going to be a moment of prayer, um, one of my followers in Canada said, hey, Pastor Levi, um, I understand that you want to pray and you want to let people go to their respective churches and things and all that. But what about those of us that don't have a pastor? Wow. Can you also add a word in there as well right. so i said well now it's going to be word and prayer <laughs> and so that's where that uh, kind of came about but yes it's called strategy and on sundays at 8 a.m we have what's called strategic sundays where we just do life and empower each other and all that as the live version of what we do every day via the text community gotcha and so normally on a s sunday at that time i'm on my way to whole foods <laughs> <laughs> so I normally I'm have you in my prayer closet. Oh no! <laughs> well, you know, I'm an early riser, so I get up at 4:30 in the morning. Jesus. So I'm kind of already through, you know. Yeah. But uh, I have been joining, and I usually have you in my AirPod going to uh, Whole Foods. So while I'm in there yeah. in Whole Foods, sometimes I mean, one time you said something, I was like, "Come on now!" And everybody just looked. I said, "Oh." Father. <laughs> What's funny is I did the same thing. I told a friend of mine, I was in the store the other day, and I said, these people are looking at me crazy. Because I'm in here laughing loud, and if you were to look at me, I'm like, it's like, what is this guy doing? But yeah, man, I get it. But thank you for listening, man. I, oh, I no problem. That. Bless you, bless you. All right, so I want to talk about three things. I want to start mm -hmm. off with the philosophy of the kingdom. You know, um, the kingdom actually, in, and I hate to say it like this, but has become a marketed buzzword. In this season, everybody got some kingdom and the kingdom this kingdom that. And when you attend, or, yeah, or when you attend or listen in, it has nothing to do. Dude, like kingdom. you just took the words out of my mouth of what I say all the time. Mm -hmm. But I'm sorry, I didn't mean to chime in. Go, ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. You triggered me. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, like so many people use it as a catchphrase and a tagline. They try to brand it and utilize it for their stuff. And like I said, they're always saying, hey, so-and-so's releasing a new record. So-and-so got a new record. And it's a kingdom sound. And I, and, and, and I don't say anything because... It's going to cause conflict, but in my mind, I'm like, there's nothing kingdom about this. It's a nice song. Mm -hmm. It's a nice message, but don't call it kingdom if it's not. And, and to your point, so many people are utilizing it in, in their branding. Um, and you know how church folks do. It, it sounds good to say. Mm -hmm. um but the reality well is, not to cut you off but no, remember a couple of years ago everything was about purpose <laughs> you know right so well, it's wait, like wait, it's wait, 2020 2020 was the year 2020 vision before the pandemic oh yeah You're right. <laughs> so, and I did mean, anybody see what was right happen? but i thought it was funny how going into 2021 now 2022 no one has anything to say. It's like, right. What happened well, a, a couple of people, well, I think I heard you say it, but a couple of people are doing the um, 22, the year of double, I think is yes. what I heard. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Mm -hmm. And I did say that, yep. And honestly, I felt it. And when Dr. Trim, of course, going back to that, um, that was something she was prophesying as well going into. And, and, and But more from the angle of not just double, but also being a year of a second chance. Mm -hmm. um, and we're using that, I don't want to say loosely, but loosely 
wherein everything that you didn't accomplish in the former seasons or the former years, this is your chance to have an opportunity to do it again. And if you did mess up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times, this is the divine moment and divine opportunity to do it again. And honest to God, um, I might have said it, she might have said it, but I'm actually living in it. Um, and I'll reveal later on, but there are so many opportunities already. And we're just in the second month of, of this year that are literally falling into my lap, almost like, do you want to do it? Yes or no, with Grammy award winning people, credible people. And not that that matters, but only saying that for the sake of saying credible, real, legit, authentic transactions are already being presented to me. And I'm having to make sure I stop, pause, pray, et cetera, and say, hey, is this a moment for me? And God is like, yes, that's your divine moment, deal or no deal. Do you want to do it or not? Right. And so, yes, definitely, definitely, man, definitely. Yeah. Likewise, likewise. And, you know, at the at the conference this year, in your year strong, we talked about uh, living at high voltage. Yes. And so that is uh, definitely happening for me. Well, let, let's just, since we're talking about, let's start with, in your opinion, what is the message of the kingdom? And what should we be? No matter where I am, no matter where, mm -hmm. if, you, if it's kingdom, I should be able to drop in on your live. Yes. I hear the message of the kingdom and yep. I should be able to drop in on somebody else's live and hear the message of the kingdom, walk into a church that claim their kingdom and hear the message of the kingdom. So let's just go right. elementary and tell us what is the <laughs> basics or the message of the kingdom. Absolutely. Great question. So the first thing I'll say is the kingdom is a frequency. Mm -hmm. It's a realm uh, in the spirit. And so to your point, if I'm listening to your song, if I'm dropping into your church or if I'm dropping in on a live, whether I hear everything you've articulated or not, or just heard the sound, I should be able to say, wait, that's a sound. That's a kingdom sound, a real one, not because it's catchy, popular or whatever, but literally it's a frequency. It's an aura. It's a, 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 a it's a sound. And of course it's a message and it's a message of hope. It's a message of empowerment. It's a message of encouragement. And it's a message that will literally shift your paradigm of thinking if you're thinking from an earthbound perspective. And if your context is limited to earthbound things, it will be a message that you might reject at first because it will literally challenge everything uh, uh, that you know or thought you knew. I like to look at it like this. It, you're living upside down but the kingdom message will turn you upside right. And instantly you're trying to figure out, well, who can I associate with? Who can I communicate with? Because the world around me wants to have a pity party, but the kingdom message won't allow you to have a pity party. So to your point in terms of how do we uh, articulate it in the simplest form, I would say this, the kingdom message will not allow you to have a bad day. And the reason I say that is, is because with the kingdom message and a kingdom perspective, Anything that happens to you in the earth realm, the kingdom will say it's not happening to you, it's happening for you. And so, for example, if you grew up in a single parent home, if you didn't have a father, if your car broke down, if you were fired on your job, we're not mad about that. Now, granted, in the reality as human beings, did it maybe change our schedule? Perhaps. Uh, did we probably get in our feelings for 2.5 seconds? Perhaps. <laughs> right. You know, did we do these things for a minute? Yeah, we did. But we understand as kingdom citizens, if it happened, it happened for a reason. And there's a lesson in the message. And there's something in there for us to extrapolate, to utilize for our life, for our neighbor, for our ministry, for our business, or what have you. So in the simplest form, <laughs> the kingdom message is a message that will not allow you to have a pity party. And it will encourage you empower you and enlighten you to do things you can't do in your own strength. You know, uh, we often hear Dr. Trim, Cindy Trim say, uh, I'm not telling you my story for pity. I'm telling you my story for principles. If you have some principles exactly. and strategies to exactly. uh, help me get to the next level. Yeah. So the, um, one of the scriptures, as you were talking, one of the scriptures that came to mind from Matthew says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be added unto you. Right. Let's right. talk about some of those things. You know, oftentimes people are trying to get those things, but they're not seeking the kingdom. And so okay. you might get them temporarily, but to get them to last a while, you really do have to seek the kingdom of God's order of doing things. Let's talk about that. 
Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and even with that scripture, it's such a popular scripture that people quote in and out of context. But definitely when you seek first the kingdom, all these things will be added unto you. So in other words, like I just said, the kingdom, which is God's domain, it's a realm, it's an authority. It's not, the best way I could probably say it is this, it's a level of awareness. And so when you're aware of who you are and whose you are, it gives you access to kingdom superpowers. I preached a message on that, which was phenomenal. Uh, 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 but it, it gives you access to a level of understanding, power, insight, and all of that, that the regular human being doesn't understand. And so seeking first the kingdom is definitely, number one, a discipline. And people don't like that word, but I'm going to say it in two ways, a discipline in terms of a practice, a study, just like a degree. You have to sit, read, articulate, comprehend that which you're studying and make it a lifestyle. But then in addition to discipline in the second form, it's something you have to sit and apply. Mm -hmm. I, I tell people all the time, and I was kind of telling you before we went live, a lot of people look at me today and think I was just born fire baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost. And I wasn't. I was a mess. <laughs> I had to ask because I was a mess. Right. Um, but I say that to say it took discipline. I remember there was a time where I was basically homeless and I was laying on the floor and all I had was an ironing board and iron and a blanket I got from Walmart laying in the house of my brother who just sold his house because I had got a new job. And then when I got the job, something fell through. He moved his family out and I was still laying there, had nowhere to go. And he kept the lights on just so I could have something going on. My point of saying that is I remember laying bare face on the carpet floor, crying out to God in prayer. And I said, look, Lord, you came through for my mama. You came through for my grandmama. We, I, I'm not really doing all this churchy stuff, but, but you seem to respond to them. And all these years of being in church, I've yet to hear your voice. I said, if you're real, I need you to come through now. And at that point of warfare, spiritual warfare, praying and dedication and discipline, I felt finally felt his presence and heard his voice. And, and it, was, it was really that moment that I began to realize, wait, he's not the God of just the church that I grew up in, but he is a God who is sovereign and kingly for real. And he will meet me wherever I am. And so once I heard his voice, what kept me from sin, what kept me from stuff is I said, I don't want to lose this level of access that I've been longing for for such a long time. And so now when things come my way, because ain't nobody perfect, I'm sure same with you, people come, things, come. yeah. <laughs> and it's like, no, 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 it's not worth my ear. It's yes. not worth insight. It's not worth, it's not worth it. So I will remain disciplined in my action. And I will also study the discipline of the kingdom to comprehend the levels of it. Because there's so many levels to it. And those who are really in the kingdom, live the kingdom, breathe the kingdom, articulate the kingdom. You can tell in their lifestyle, you can hear in their talk. Because you don't really hear too many kingdom people having pity parties. Mm -hmm. Even with me, just like now, I told my story, not for you to feel bad, but for you to realize, okay, car repossessed, great, best thing that should have ever happened to you. I remember, okay. speaking, I, I remember speaking at a juvenile detention center, uh, and the guards were looking at me crazy because I looked at the, the young men and I said, this is probably the best thing that ever happened to you. They're like, how could it be? Yes, you made a bad decision, but that bad decision caused you to tap into the kingdom. And now that you're in the kingdom, not a geographical location, but a place in the realm of the spirit, it can now shift your geographical location and your mentality and your posture, your character, all of that, because that's what kingdom is. White, black, Hispanic, Asian, Filipino, whatever. Kingdom doesn't care about that. Kingdom allows you to do what you can't do, go where you can't go in your own strength and it elevates you and it also elevates you to elevate others uh, you know what i'm gonna stop because i can keep going well that was so <laughs> much just in what you said it's just so much and uh, if i went there we could be here for an hour all but, right that's what i said let me stop <laughs> but what i do <laughs> want to say though you were talking about discipline and um seeking after the things of god but Again, it just reminds me of a scripture, <laughs> but mm. a scripture, you know, it declares that he's a rewarder of them 
yes, diligently seek, seek him. him. Yes, so sir. even in your press, even in your, your seeking, God rewards those. If you come yeah. up to God, the scripture says he'll, he, he's going to draw an out of you. But exactly. and so he rewards those that seek him. So it's just like our God. He, he has all kind of, my spiritual teacher says, lessons and blessings. So yeah, there's all kind yeah. of blessings when you begin to seek the kingdom and seek after God. Let's it move because we can stay there. I'll go ahead. I'm going to say, I say it's beautiful because like you just did the parallel with the scriptures. God's not looking for perfect people. He's looking for perfect pursuit. So, mm -hmm. right, if you just diligently seek me, I'm not saying don't have a bad day. He's not saying you're not going to get emotional. He's not saying you're not going to get upset. But in your anger, in your up, in your down, in your indifference, can you find at least 30 seconds to seek me? Because in that 30 second seek, I can change the next 24 hours. Mm -hmm. Somebody received it. <laughs> yeah. And even as you said that, you know, scripture says be angry, but sin not. And All right. Yep. Talk about the message or the philosophy of the kingdom now. Uh, this word, uh, and you'll kind of laugh when I say it because we always say this. Uh, let's talk about the language of the kingdom because we often mm -hmm. say you're talking my language. Like when someone is talking, the message or the language of the kingdom, you hear it and it kind of resonates with you. So let's just talk about some of the language of the kingdom. How should kingdom citizens speak and talk and decree and declare? Yeah, yeah. Great question. Let me say this first. When you're talking about how can I identify, the kingdom message does many things, but I like to call it the spiritual litmus test. The kingdom message gives you righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's scripture, but that's mm -hmm. the message. Righteousness, peace. In fact, whose song is that that says righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Ghost? That's the kingdom of God. Then, 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 I remember, uh, you know, some of these kingdom messages I remember, and people don't give him, to at least in my opinion, the credit that's mm -hmm. due. But a lot of that I remember from Ron Cannoli years ago. Before yeah, there was a yeah, Israel yeah, Halton yeah. and all these people, yep, he yep, was singing yep. kingdom messages. And I was Absolutely. Like, wow. Yeah. Absolutely. So, yeah. And that was yeah. one of the, I don't know if you were talking about that song, but he has a song that That might about have been his. Are, that yeah. might have been his. But definitely yeah. righteousness, peace, and join the Holy Ghost. And then, of course, on the contrary, what did the enemy do? Kill, steal, and destroy. And so if you want to identify a kingdom message, is it righteous? Is it peaceful? And is it joy? And the Holy Ghost scripture also says, the blessings of the Lord maketh rich and addeth no sorrow. Mm -hmm. So are you rich and in pain or are you rich and no longer sorrowful? That's kingdom. So essentially in the simplest form, kingdom is anything that keeps your momentum high, uh, uh, your energy high, your, per your perspective clear, um, and your heart right. That part, that's a whole mm -hmm. nother piece of your heart right. And so that's number one. But then when it comes to even decreeing and declaring in prayer, which I talk about in the book that you mentioned, Rule by Decree, when you make a decree, you must first understand who you are. Number one, you're a kingdom citizen. As a kingdom citizen, just like an American citizen, there are certain privileges and rights that are given to you, not because you've been perfect, not because you've been kind, but it's what comes as being birthed here. It's your birth right. And so as a kingdom citizen, it, uh, uh, you have to realize that you are a king and a queen. And historically, only kings and queens can make decrees. What is a decree? A decree is a law. So when you declare, declare just means I'm saying emphatically what I decreed, which was the law. And so in other words, I can sit here all day long and write my decree and say, I declare uh, 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 health benefits. I declare <laughs> wealth transfers, all of that. But the declare is what I wrote in the realm of the spirit and in the earth. I then declare it out loud. And so what kings do, what queens do as kingdom citizens, as peculiar people, as a chosen priesthood or royal priesthood, rather, um, 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 you, you begin to make those decrees. But, and I hear people do this too. You cannot declare or say, I decree and then say something earthbound or something broken. Uh, and we're not asking permission. That's how you can tell too. Um, and I get it. Traditionally, you're taught, ask God, hey, Father God, can I, can I, can I, can I? But what good father do you know wants you to ask permission for you to be your best self? That doesn't make sense. Sounds good in theory, but it doesn't make sense. If I know the will and the desire of my father for me, I don't have to ask permission for what he already said I have a right and a benefit to. Mm -hmm. 
And so, for example, if you know you have money in the bank, you don't have to go to the bank and ask permission to make a withdrawal. You insert your card that shows your kingdom benefits and who you are to legislate and legitimize who you are, and you withdraw what's yours. What permission did you have to ask? Right. You only have to ask permission when you don't know who you are. And if you don't know who you are, then that's not kingdom. Several things that uh, you said <laughs> that I just want to expound upon just a little bit, since we're having a conversation. Right, let's um, go. <laughs> right. So a kingdom, a, a king has authority or rule over a domain. Correct. Correct. And so as kings and as queens or mm -hmm. uh, kings and priests, uh, mm -hmm. we have authority over our domain. Correct. And so what we say legislates what happens in our domain that a lot Correct. of people have chaos going on in their lives or in their domain because they haven't legislated or they've legislated but didn't legislate what they want so then you have right. to change your declaration you have to change right. your confession and your that's good that's really good or like you just said every king has their kingdom or their domain and so you can seek and Oh, I'm going to say this because most prophetic people, if you look in the church, the two offices that collide the most are prophets and pastors. Mm -hmm. Why? Because most bona fide pastors operate with protocol. Most bona fide prophets see, but they move sporadically. <laughs> Where the pastor saying, you're right, but let's do it properly. Well, the prophet's like, no, 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 no. My point of saying that is this. You can be a king in your region and have insight, information, revelation, and have the ability to impart. But you can release the right word in the wrong time or the wrong space. Doesn't mean your word was wrong. It just means you weren't in your domain. And you have to wait the for the proper timing. And so one thing I always teach is, even if you're just traveling, if you're going from Houston to California or whatever, Every time you cross a country border or state border or a new job or facility, you must establish your legal jurisdiction to operate in that space or in that region because you can see and hear all day long, but then you'll experience resistance in the realm of the spirit because your word is right, but the atmosphere doesn't know your voice print. Mm -hmm. And so you must establish who you are to be there, and I'm going to say this and I'll hush because I want to keep just talking because I'll, I'll, I'll go, but it's just like when Nehemiah rebuilt the wall of Jerusalem, uh, when he found that the wall fell, he could have easily gotten upset or mad, which the Bible and scripture does say he was bothered, but he didn't just go to rebuild the wall. He got permission from his king. He was, he was uh, 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 legitimized, and the king not only released him, but sent him with the credentials and everything he needed to operate in the jurisdiction, the anointing, and the calling in that region. So when they tried to come against him and kill him for rebuilding the wall, they couldn't touch him because although I don't like you, I don't have jurisdiction to touch you. And that's kingdom. Yes, I agree. You said something else um, about authority and asking for permission. Yes. And it reminds me... Um, I lived in my mother's house until I was grown. Mm -hmm. Then when I moved out, I would come back to my mother's house and I'd start asking permission to go in her refrigerator and do such mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. she, I, I annoyed her because she was mm -hmm. like, why are you asking me for permission? This is your house. Yeah. If you want something in the refrigerator, you get it. Yeah. And I was like, well, no, my house is on the South side of town. She <laughs> said, no, well, you have that house maybe on the south side of town that you live in but this is also your home mm. and what's in here is for you because it's yeah. mine and what's mine is yours yeah. so um I, I said all that to say sometimes we forget that mm. this is our father's the earth is the lord and the food is the and earth, the and they that dwell therein <laughs> we have authority in the earth yeah. And so we're walking around as, as the way you said, like we're um, like we are strangers are, you know, we don't have 
permission and authority to let rule and legislate in the earth. I usually say that God has given us permission to rule, reign, and take dominion in the earth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To rule, mm -hmm. reign, and take dominion in the earth. And you only yeah. do that when you understand the principles of the kingdom and the, 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 the power that you have in God. Moving. Exactly. All right. So this last one, mm -hmm. so very important. Before I even get there, let me say this. I started not to, but I am. I went to a Muslim or uh, mosque on Sunday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A Muslim friend of mine invited me, and I started to make an excuse not to go. I was like, I'm a Christian. I'm not going to a mosque. But <laughs> I heard Holy Spirit says, go. I want to show you something. So I was just about to say, I'm glad you went. Yeah. So I went, and um, I noticed a lot of things. Now, one thing that annoyed me at first, I was like, they didn't have a lick of singing. <laughs> They did a lot of teaching, <laughs> no singing. But I, so after I got over that, uh, I kept hearing them say, um, as they were talking, each person, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, mm. or the Honorable Louis Farrakhan said, mm -hmm. and then they would, you know, do some reading. And so Holy Spirit says, are you saying what I say? Mm. Are you declaring? Are you telling people this is what I say? I was like, oh my gosh. So they were literally giving credit. And then when they first started, when they get up to talk, they would say, you know, my name is whatever. And I come in the name of, you know, Allah. And I mm -hmm. declare that there's no other guy. You know, they did all that little stuff. Right, right, right. And, uh, and but he kept saying, and after they would start teaching or talking, they would reference either uh, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad or they would uh, reference the Honorable Louis Farrakhan. And so I heard Holy Spirit say, are you referencing me? Right. Who, who are you hearing? Who do you have in your ear? And so with that, I want to talk about mentorship. Yes. Mentorship in the kingdom. Because I hear, as I, I knew that I can hear that you're influenced by Cindy Trim. Because mm -hmm. the, mm -hmm. the language, uh, mm -hmm. some things that she say, you say. Yeah. And I can tell imposters. Like um, there was a, a, a movement a while back when people were... They were doing, I be, and, and I love her, and I could use her as an example. They were yeah. doing the things that Winita Bynum did, right? But you can tell they wasn't students of Winita Bynum because they didn't exactly. have that that voice. They didn't have that language. Mm -hmm. So they put on the shawl, you know, wore the long. They did all that, but once yeah. they started speaking, you can tell they were not students. Because anybody can look the part. Mm -hmm. But it's more than that. And to your point, of course, I hear it all the time. They're like, oh, we could tell who your spiritual covering is. <laughs> but one thing I never hear is I sound like I'm mimicking her. Mm -mm, mm -mm. There's a difference. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Because mm -hmm. I got the mantle and I have the understanding and I'm a legitimate son. I'm not a fan. I'm a legitimate son. In fact, there's times where she and I are having dialogue across the table and I'm looking at her as a human being and a spiritual leader that it's not until we're out in public and I see people be like, can I get a picture? And then I'm like, oh, yeah, she is. Who she is. Yeah. You, know? you know what I'm saying? Because I'm not there for that. I've never been faced by that. I don't care if it's an artist, whomever. I go after the mantle. And so to your point, mentorship is vital. Sonship is vital. Daughtership, same thing, is vital. Um, especially when it comes to the kingdom. And oftentimes I would recommend for those listening, don't, uh, okay. So you can grow up in a church um, in your region or geographical location, and that's where you were raised. And so you think this is my spiritual father, when in fact, they're probably not your spiritual father. They can be your pastor, but pastor, spiritual father, mentor, coach, all different hats. You can be all of all of those uh, components in one, but they're all different hats. And so just because you grew up there does not mean that's the voice for you. I've been under several different leaders for years, but Dr. Cindy Trim was the only voice that literally broke me. I wasn't trying to be in ministry. I wasn't trying to pastor. I was not trying to be this person at all. I loved speaking and teaching, and I just want to be a well-rounded speaker. So when I went to Kingdom School of Ministry, I only went because I'm like, I understand the court system. I understand education. I understand all these different avenues. Let me understand this. And little did I know <laughs> that me just going to be a student was going to shift the trajectory of my life, literally, you know. And so to that end, not only did I learn the kingdom message through her, 
but I watch her real life behind the scenes. And she is like Dr. Maddie Moss Clark says, uh, uh, live the life you sing about. Mm -hmm. She literally lives the life she preaches about in person. If not, I watch her preach to tens of thousands and I watch her give that same, same energy to 20 or 200. And so saying all that to say, definitely, I am a product of mentorship. I am a product of sonship, but I'm also doing it the way God gives it to me. Not to be a carbon copy, mm. but take the message and the gospel, which is a progressive gospel, and say, okay, God, how do I take these foundational principles and now speak to my generation, my measure of rule that you have given me? How can mentorship advance your life? Because, like, they, you know, they have people that read the Bible and have read the Bible for years, but somehow when you have a trusted mentor mm -hmm. that have navigated the terrains if i could say that mm -hmm. of the spiritual walk and of the kingdom mm -hmm. how can that propel and, and, and advance your life you just said it it's trust if i know you're a trusted voice I now no longer have to take two or three years and come back within myself. Is this right? Is this wrong? Is this up? Is this down? I trust you. So that means when you speak, I can move. Because one thing about the word of God, whether it be prophecy or just whatever, it's time sensitive as well. Prime example, I'm sure there's plenty of people, and I'm sure you can identify, that had an idea. And then you waited. Next thing you know, two, three years later, someone else knows the, everything. You knew right. like, wait, I, that was my idea. It's because you took too long. Mm -hmm. You sabotaged yourself. You didn't move when God said move. And so I think the first level uh, that can progress you as it relates to mentorship is if it is indeed a trusted voice for you. And I say for you because that's what we have different leaders. Someone might like Joel Osteen and that works for them, but that might work for them. And then Bishop Jakes works for somebody, nothing against him, but that might not be what somebody likes. So find the voice that's trustworthy and speaks to your spirit. That's number one. Um, but then number two, from an experience perspective, and honestly, I feel like I got the greatest cheat book in my life. I'm so grateful because with Dr. Trim being where she is in her 60s, that means when I sit with her, I get 60 plus years of information in the amount of time it takes me to sit at her feet or read her books or whatever the case may be. So I don't have to go relive certain things. I can take her word for it. Why? Because I trust her. Two, she's been there, done that. And like scripture says, from glory to glory, I'm going to take the glory to glory and now go operate in the glory God has given me with the information I received from her or whomever the mentor is. So, so mentorship definitely, um, it, uh, it builds trust, um, it saves time, uh, uh, you can build up the information. And then of course, thirdly, and there's more than that, but just for the sake of three points in churchy, <laughs> um, um, it's accountability, mm -hmm. you know, but it goes back again to trust because I trust you to rebuke me. I'm gonna say this, um, uh, a lot of people don't give Jethro enough credit. When we look at how Jethro advised Moses in terms of having elders and leaders to help him carry out his assignment, we don't look at how Moses helped his daughter, all that good stuff, but Jethro invited Moses into his home or into his space and he fed him. The reason I say that is because once Jethro got to the point of quote unquote disciplining him or advising him, Moses was able to receive from him because Jethro operated in the law of invitation first. Mm. He operated in the law of, of um, gratitude or whatever you want to say first. And a lot of times we can't receive from mentors, coaches, pastors, because we have a, a, a group of pastors who just do what I say, when I say, how I say. And if we're going to be honest, the church as it's become, not God's church, is the place where nobody can become a somebody. And because you didn't make the basketball team and you're still hurt because of that, and you weren't popular in school, I could be popular Ooh. as the pastor. And because you didn't get the record deal you wanted and they chose somebody else, but if I start my own storefront, I could be popular here. And how dare you come in here with gifts and talents and take my space because this is my domain, not the king's domain, but your domain. So I say that to say, you got to find the voice that speaks to you and doesn't mind pushing you. I'll say this too, and I swear I keep saying that, but I'm done. <laughs> I, I, uh, and you probably saw the live I did with her. 
And I had told her, I said, this is the most healthiest mentoring spiritual parent relationship I've ever been in in my life because she never tries to hold me back. There is no intimidation. She literally says, here's my shoulder, stand, go. How can I help you? How can I fund you? How can I support you? And so then as a mentee to her, those who I mentor, I have that same energy now. And I'm like, how, how can I help you? What do you need? I pastor people who I keep telling them, I ain't gotta be your pastor. If you wanna leave, go respectfully. And if you need me, I'll be right here. And if not, fine, go fly. You know, so mentorship is vital, especially if you want a kingdom mentor um, to show you, because the reality is if we're 100, the kingdom message can seem complicated. Um, not because it is, but we're living in a world that's not kingdom. Yeah. And so when you're living in a world that's not kingdom and trying to operate with a kingdom mentality, it can very much so be burdensome at times because you're like, who can I talk to? Who can I relate to? They don't get me. You know, um, I've had several situations where in churches I've been quote unquote kicked out because I didn't have a problem speaking truth to power. But speaking truth to power, the majority looks at it as one way. I'm not here for the majority. I'm here for kingdom authority. And if that makes me look like the outcast, I will be the outcast and keep my power versus mm -hmm. giving it up to fit in with you. Take your personal power back, sir. Period. <laughs> <laughs> Levi, well, we could talk all day. Um, Literally. But if you want more information, about mm -hmm. Levi Harrell, I encourage you to take some of his master classes. He yes. has them in authorship, branding, entrepreneurship, and much more. If you're familiar with Linktree, his handle is HLH Enterprises. LH Enterprises. Connect with him today. Hey, brother, how can we find you on all social media? Yes, all social media, anywhere. If you simply type in Levi Harrell, that's L E V I H A R R E L L. Oh, that's like a commercial. <laughs> um, you can just type my name and then literally everything will pop up from everything on Amazon.com. As you mentioned, YouTube, Linktree, Facebook, Instagram, everything will be there. Just find the light skin, bright guy. And that'll <laughs> be me. <laughs> so, so what you're really saying is your SEO optimization works. <laughs> it does. It really does. I, I hate to say it like this. Google me. But right. you can. <laughs> to God be the glory. <laughs> well, Levi Harrell, Harrell, thank you so very much for being yes, a part sir. of today's conversation. Yes, sir. Thank you for having me. And keep doing what you do, man. This is great. Bless you, sir. Yes, sir. You are invited to the Black Business Honors, an award celebration designed to honor local owners and employees of black businesses, as well as encourage an entrepreneurial spirit and networking in the black community. Here's what others had to say. I'm attending the Black Business Honors to show support for many of my friends who have stepped out on courage, staying true to their purpose for network opportunities and just to be part of positive happenings in our community. I am attending the Black Business Honors is honest because I look forward to connecting with and encouraging all other black business owners. I simply want them to know that it's never too late in life to follow your dream. It's going to be an amazing experience. For tickets, date, time, and the location, go to blackbusinesshonors.com. That's blackbusinesshonors.com. Stay, Stay tuned, tuned for the Larry, Larry w. w. Robinson, Robinson Show. Show. Celebrated media personality Larry W. Robinson presents Gospel Updates. Gospel Updates is the who, what, when, why, and where in the gospel music industry. Gospel Updates is a monthly magazine, weekly newsletter, video webcast, as well as a podcast. Gospel Updates has over 25 years of featuring people in the gospel music community. Gospel Updates magazine and the new Gospel Updates weekly newsletter document those who are continuing to help shape and write new chapters of this ever-evolving story of gospel. Go to www.gospelupdates.com. That's www.gospelupdates.com to get the latest issues. If you want to be featured, call or text 337-214-4046 or email gospelupdates at gmail.com for rates and details. Gospel Updates, featuring people in the gospel community for over 25 years. 
You're listening to The Larry W. Robinson Show. Inspiration for your eternal name. 